Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on this Facebook Live session of Act Against Obesity, brought to you by the Times of India in association with Johnson & Johnson. I will be your host for the next half an hour or so, Parameeta Chatterjee. Now, today we're going to be discussing what is obesity, because obesity as a phenomena in our country is rising by leaps and bounds. At the last count, it is estimated that there are at least 20 crore obese patients in the country. In fact, the real figure is likely to be much higher. So why is it that we are seeing such a sharp rise in obesity? And why is obesity called a disease? Because for many of us, for you and I, obesity is just a case of being perhaps grossly overweight. And we often link it to terms like uh, the lack of willpower or changing one's diet. But actually, obesity is something very different. And it's something that you and I need to be aware of especially at a time when we are all fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. So let's understand the deep connection between obesity and COVID and why all of you need to be aware of its dangers, its manifestations, and of course, the treatment options. We have with us today joining us from Delhi, uh, a very special duo of uh, husband and wife, uh, that's uh, Dr. Parveen Bhatia, who is the Senior Consultant Bariatric Surgeon, and Dr. Indu Bhatia, who is a gynecologist come laparoscopic surgeon, joining us from the Bhatia Global Hospital. Dr. Praveen Bhatia is also a consultant at Sir Gangaram Hospital. Thank you so much, doctors, for joining us. It's a pleasure having you and for sharing the time with us. Great. Dr. Praveen, if I may start with you, I gave a very brief uh, description of obesity. But, you know, first and foremost, it's important for us to understand that when, for most of us, obesity is more a case of just being overweight. Um, but it seems to be much more than that. And in fact, we've been calling it a disease. Why is it that we regard obesity as a disease? I would put it uh, in an absolute simple manner that obesus is a Latin word and it means to eat more to eat more. So mm -hmm. thinking is that if the person is eating more and not exercising that much, then the balance is not maintained. So our, th our situations is, as you have rightly put, that obesity is also a pandemic, just like COVID, just like Corona. So obesity had become a pandemic and why the obese people are increasing in India also is because of one, we are eating more, we are eating fast food, and we are exercising less. In schools also, our children are taught to play video games rather than football or hockey or cricket or whatsoever. So thinking is that you have to strike a balance between diet and exercise. Okay, so we have to strike a balance. Let me go across to uh, Dr. Indu with that uh, question. Now, uh, Dr. Indu, uh, when we talk about being obese, uh, if it's just linked to diet and exercise, is everybody prone to obesity or are some people more in danger than others? It has some genetic connection also. So if uh, genetically you have more members uh, who are obese in the family, then there is more tendency with all these factors together with genetics, you have more tendency for being obese. Okay, so there is a genetic element because Dr. Praveen, it is said that Indians, the kind of obesity we see in Indians is very different from what we see, say, in the West. What's the critical difference? No, in Indians, all of us know that it is called as pot belly especially the visceral fat is more rather than peripheral fat. In Europeans, in Americans, the fat is mostly on the peripheries and they appear to be obese. But once the scientific studies have also proven that we Indians are having more pot bellies, more bellies in which it, it is just protruding out and the visceral fat is more, that is a basic difference. And another aspect is because these patients are having more visceral fat then the chances of comorbidities, chances of other problems, other diseases is also high, in, especially in Asian population 
or Indian population. Means we are going to become the diabetic capital of the world. And it, the maximum number of diabetics will be present in India very, very shortly. So this is the reason because of the pot belly, because of the visceral fat, diseases like diabetes, hypertension, sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea, cardiac disease, joint pains. So all these are more in Asians as compared to the Western population. And that is the reason I will just come out. I know what are you going to ask is BMI. So in Indians, in Asians, the calculation of overweight vis-a-vis -vis morbid obese is also decreased by 2.5 score BMI mm -hmm. less than the Western population. For example, I if see. the population is having a BMI of 30 to 35, and in Indian population, it will be 32.5 with comorbidities that will call them as obese, morbidly obese. Okay, so basically Indians, their fat basically, to put it simply, accumulates more around the stomach, and that's from where diseases like diabetes, like hypertension really emanate. Um, Dr. Indu, now you're a gynecologist and you're seeing uh, women and we've seen in India and all of us included, uh, you know, uh, is are Indian women more prone to obesity, say, post-pregnancy? What's the trend that you're seeing amongst women? I think in India, after pregnancy, obesity is very common because... After just after the delivery, the diet round. Uh, changes very much, and they are more for uh, going for fat intake, more fat intake according to their uh, diet habits. That is the reason, and the uh, physical activity is decreasing these days. Hmm. That is becoming more obese post delivery. Okay, so post pregnancy, women are definitely more at risk. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Pavi, now, uh, you know, uh, clearly it is, uh, you know, it is linked to my lifestyle. It's okay, so uh, post-pregnancy, it seems that women are definitely more, um, more at risk. And uh, Dr. Pavi, uh, let me come to you with this point. So it seems that women are more at risk. Uh, of course, post-pregnancy is, is one such uh, uh, you know, behavior, we see them gaining weight and not losing that weight. What about men? Yeah, men also, basically, as I mentioned, once you go up, uh, across your age, that means, for example, you have stopped playing, you have crossed youth, you are married, and then you start overeating, you are not exercising, then the obesity starts. And this obesity carries on increasing. Most of times, it is surprising, astonishing for us also that people have become maybe 140 kg, 180 kg, 200 kg, and they don't know even that they are heading towards disasters. They are sitting on a mm -hmm. time bomb. So thinking is that one should definitely, and this era of COVID, I, again and again, I am re-emphasizing that this era of COVID should teach us that first and foremost is your own health. Once you take mm -hmm. care of your own health, then the chances of COVID infestation or infection and causing mortality definitely decreases if you are a normal weight person. Okay, well, well, we'll find out a little bit more about how COVID and obesity are deeply interlinked. But uh, Dr. Indu, uh, you know, let me come to you with this point. So if, if I talk about, you know, when I need to watch out, what I'm eating, what I'm, how I'm exercising, uh, is it basically for women, is it as they you know, head closer towards menopause or are younger women also prone to obesity? In that sense, you know, uh, at any age, women can become obese or is there a particular time frame when they are most prone to obesity? The age is not a factor for gaining weight. Even adolescent okay. obesity is well known. So it hmm. all depends upon the energy balance which we are taking and which we are exercising and spending that energy. The difference hmm. between the two is causing obesity. But uh, just after pregnancy and at the time of menopause when our basal metabolic rate it goes down. So at that time our requirement is less and it will continue to take the same amount of calories and we are spending less amount of calories. We are uh, heading towards weight gain more near menopause and uh, just after the pregnancy. I, I, th I think that's the bottom line. Obesity is not linked to age. Please remember, you can be obese at any age. Adolescent uh, obesity is very Right. Good. 
so so don't think you know that you know just because i'm young and i'm gaining a little weight it's okay i sh- i should just ignore it or, or you know it, it'll be okay because i'm young it is not okay dr pavid i've been talking a lot about covid uh, you know covid we've been told that if you have any underlying disease you are more at risk from the after effects of covid but you seem to be quite alarmed about the linkage between obesity and covid what's the connection yeah excellent basic thoughts are that i as parveen bhatia is not much bothered but whole of the world is bothered can you imagine mm-hmm. why the maximum number of deaths have been there in us because 42% of their population is obese and 9% of their population is more than 40 bmi so if they are obese or they are morbidly obese or super obese then both obesity is a inflammatory disorder and similarly corona also initiates the inflammation the mm. adipose cells which are accumulated as i told you in the beginning that these adipose cells which are present inside the abdomen of an obese patient they have something called as as2 receptors and okay. this this virus also corona virus has a spe- special affinity for as2 receptors as2 receptors okay so these cells become the portal or gateway or entry point for the corona virus and then the virus carries on shedding one is loading and another is shedding so virus loads gets shed and that affects the lungs that affects the uh, heart that decreases the immunity of the person in obese patients already the immunity is compromised and right. then they have a tendency of thrombosis that means the blood coagulation is there so once these two pandemics that means the corona pandemic and the obesity pandemic they are colliding with each other the effects are that 113% increased risk is there if the person is having corona and obesity and 76% incidence is increased to be in icu if the person is obese and 52% okay. risk is increased to die if the patient is having corona plus obesity so i think this is very very important and this is not my study this has come from north carolina university and they have seen 339000 patients not one study or not two studies they have compiled these studies and ultimately reached these diagnoses under 13% 76% 52% okay i think these are alarming numbers so just to explain to us uh, is that because when you're obese you have more fat cells covid uh, 19 also links closer to these fat cells attaches themselves very right, uh, closely to the fat cells so the more fat cells you have the more prone you are to covid 19 complications because once they attach they can go basically anywhere in your body and then uh, go and attack whether it's your lungs your heart uh, you know just to put it simply so hence if i'm obese today and i'm watching this show i need to take action dr indu what's the kind of action that one can take because you know there is diet there's lifestyle there's also something called obesity pills there's surgery how do i decide if i want to take action today as to what i should do see it, it has to be multi centric it is not only one action which can decrease your obesity it has to be diet it has to be your exercise and if you are super obese if your bmi is more than 35 and if you have comorbidities then you may require surgery also okay so it is i have the that of all and you have to go to a physician to ask him whether uh, diet is enough or exercise is more important or you Why okay, I think that's a really important point. You have to go to a physician because Dr. Praveen, most of us, our viewers, you know, watching this will say, okay, my coach say I will eat to you know one roti less, or I will eat a little less, and this is how my diet will start. Uh, am I am I going to see results if I am already in the obese category, which is BMI above of 30 and possibly 32 onwards? Will controlling my diet, for instance, be enough? And how much should I go and try that route wonderful question the answer is that it all depends on in what bracket are you lying 
for as i mentioned the normal bmi is 25 if you are having a bmi between 25 and 30 then this is a overweight and if it is more than 30 or 32.5 with comorbidities then these overweight patients they can definitely challenge themselves i would put it this way they can challenge themselves by taking the diet in a absolutely supervised manner and 70% of the dietary restrictions and 30% is the exercise which ultimately mm. plays a role and their target should be that they should reduce 10% of the weight at least if they are able to reduce their weight by 10% then set a higher target and then go in and work for another 10% but if you have gone beyond 35 as dr indu bhatti was also mentioning 32.5 if you are having diabetes hypertension and so on so forth 35 if you are having bmi then it is a time that you will not be able to do the dieting and exercising then start thinking of going visiting a obesity physician and then start thinking of going in for surgery and ultimately reduce not 10% but maybe 60 to 70% of the excess body weight so that kind of loss is needed at that stage and that will prevent the diseases again and again i always say people ask me that how much is the risk of these surgeries i say that risk mm. of disease the obesity is more as compared to risk of the operation so diabetes hypertension all these diseases will come down will not have the complications and you will be mm. further benefited Okay, so first and foremost, I think fantastic advice. So, you know, for all our viewers watching, go ahead, go to that uh, QI special app which is there. See what parameters uh, you meet for obesity. Find out your BMI, and based on what your BMI is, and especially if it's above thirty-five, heading towards forty, then you definitely need an expert opinion. Because if you're falling in the obese category, you have to try and lose ten percent of your body weight to start with. That's very important. to bring down your um, you know uh, mortality rates or danger of covid uh, down today so that's a really important message but dr indu you know again coming to men and women i find it very unfair you know me and my husband will both go on a diet i find he is shedding weights like anything i am on the same diet but i'm hardly losing one or two kilos so women is obesity more of an uphill struggle in that sense do i need to act quicker and faster if i do have if i'm falling in that dangerous bmi category see loss of weight depends upon your basal metabolic rate men okay. have more the basal metabolic rate for women is more than as compared to the females so the amount of energy you spend uh, during exercise will be less because your bmr is also less that is why we we have to um, exercise more we have to take care of our diet more than the men to reduce the same amount of weight so would you say that for women perhaps uh, you know going to a physician is more urgent and more important uh, because they won't see such quick results on a diet or one can generalize we, we need to be more uh, scientific in our weight reduction because our bmr is less this is metabolic mm. is less so we need to exercise we need muscle muscle training and diet together to Reduce the weight to get the results. Okay. It, it so has to be. So we have to work harder. So women have to work harder to lose weight. Because first, okay. increase our muscle mass to increase our BMR. Only then we will see the results. Okay. So essentially, if you're, you know, as women out there, sorry guys, you are going to have to work harder than uh, you know the men out there because we have less of muscle mass and we need to fire up our engines more and work harder towards that. Okay. So that's one option: diet and exercise. But Dr. Parveen, for how long do I try the diet and exercise, especially in the context of a current pandemic? I, as I mentioned, that we should always quantify our success. Okay. Quantification of the success would be, for example, if your weight is 100 kg, you only target for 10 kg loss in next six months. and mm-hmm. start working on that start working on diet and exercise if you are able to do it then increase your target to 15% to 20% so it all depends on in which bracket are you lying and i would put it straight that if for example if your bmi is more than 40 or 45 you have given enough time to yourself 
you have done some crash dieting and then suddenly you start increasing your weight no that is a time that you should go under knife go under laparoscope we do laparoscopic surgery as well as bariatric surgery the robotic way and then the reduction once the patient goes in for surgery in the first week itself the patient loses 5 to 7 kg you can see the change in the mindset they feel that i have been trying so much for last so many months and years but i have not been able to reduce 1 kg even now in one week 5 to 7 kg has been lost next week another 5 to 7 kg and that sets the momentum that sets the ball rolling and then they are able to attain or maintain their desired weight it sounds fantastic you know you get this laparoscopic surgery done so it's not invasive it doesn't mean you know having a open stomach surgery or anything of that sort uh, dr indu uh, you know it walk us through what a typical bariatric surgery actually looks like i think rather than dr indu i will tell better okay 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 <laughs> Yeah, the basic thoughts are that uh, in the I can. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I should take the permission now. <laughs> so the thinking is that the in the stomach, the more if you are morbidly obese, the stomach size increases, increases and increases. And it may be if the capacity was one liter, one point two liters, then it becomes two point five liters. and that is the reason that patients most of times patients say that i have been eating so little but i never feel that i have taken enough and that is the mm-hmm. cause that is causing the weight gain so uh, what we do is that we reduce the size of the stomach by 75% so once the stomach size becomes maybe 150 ml 110 ml then the patient will be taking whatsoever they, they want to but the satiety will be faster that means satisfaction will be faster they will feel fullness of the stomach and that will send a signal to the brain that we have had enough now i should not take more and that is the stimulus for the fat cells which are present inside the body they start breaking up they start melting away and that gives the energy that gives the those give the calories and then the weight loss so as i mentioned in the first week 5 to 7 kg next week 5 to 7 kg next week 3 to 4 kg and so on so forth this is one uh, sleeve gastrectomy and another op- operation is called as gastric bypass gastric yeah. bypass we especially limit for those patients who are having severe uncontrolled diabetes for example they are on insulin still the sugar is not controlled so for them yes gastric bypass is the answer then hmm. those patients for example who are having lot of reflux reflux of the acid they are having hiatus hernia for them sleeve gastrectomy is not the answer gastric bypass is the answer so thinking okay. is that one should definitely consult a obesity surgeon and then once the they have the rapport with each other then they should decide that yes whether sleeve gastrectomy or gastric bypass what is the option for us and then go ahead okay so there are several kinds of surgery which are available depending on on the state of affairs depending on my physical being um but clearly it is a minimally invasive surgery and we'll see the results like this so one is the physical appearance of weight loss my hunger will come down because the size of my stomach has come down as well so can do the other i think a big problem facing a lot of women especially is the case of infertility uh, explain to us the linkage between obesity and infertility and how effective is surgery to correct that infertility yeah. in fact obese patients the the because of uh, obese patients are more prone for pcos pcos is polycystic ovarian syndrome so in that case the egg formation is delayed and it is not proper and that is why it leads to infertility so once we treat obesity the pcos portion is treated and the patients become fertile very soon as soon as they lose weight either by diet or by exercise or by bariatric surgery depending upon their initial bmi okay so it it does help resolve the infertility aspect because uh, it is again a chicken and egg situation because pcos is again so rampant but it's rampant in obese patients and as you get more obese the more the pcos uh, takes hold of you okay just a second just a second yeah, just a second yeah. i will tell you a small story 
story was that uh, this this is a 35 uh, and uh, i'm working in ibm and she was being treated for infertility for last 8 years and she has been vis- visiting all the doctors in gurgaon and delhi and wherever and g- getting the best possible treatment but once she came to us and dr indu also examined and she said that your cause of infertility is pcos and your cause of infertility is obesity first mm. let us work on obesity and then you definitely would expect. and can you imagine that we both of us could convince her that yes we should go she should go in for obesity surgery once mm. she went in for obesity surgery her pcod or pcos got treated and another few months she delivered so what i mean oh, to say wonderful. what i mean to say that these are beautiful uh, i would say stories which motivate us also that yes one should not think carry on think for example there are people who are having joint pains and they go in for joint replacement surgery no joint replacement surgery will not be able to give you the best if mm-hmm. obesity is there so if you treat the obesity maybe you will not need the joint replacement surgery so one should know okay. the cause rather than treat the effect okay so 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 go back to the root cause which in many cases is actually obesity the you know the weight gain is impacting your entire body but uh, dr indu uh, you know let me come to you because again this is a you know a slight area of you know there is a sort of a controversy or perhaps a misconception that you know surgery is seen as perhaps a cosmetic procedure more in terms of you know bringing my figure back if and i'm talking for young girls and young women that you know it it it's, it's going to help me regain my hourglass figure or whatever you know get me back in shape uh, but uh, you know is, is surgery uh, used at all is it is it also a cosmetic procedure when we talk about uh, bariatric surgery no it is it is basically for uh, health reasons it is not a cosmetic surgery because for cosmetic mm-hmm. surgery the indications are in such patients when the bmi is very uh, high in those right. cases uh, it will not be uh, called cosmetic surgery it will be a uh, surgery for good health not the right. cosmetic so, one so, so basically they are being... obese they are overall obese and they will overall decrease the weight okay because uh, dr praveen you know uh, liposuction bariatric surgery they are sort of spoken of uh, in the same breath but you know the criteria of surgery for the two are very different and the effect on the body is also very different right sure. so but i would put it this way that this has been as you mentioned in the beginning the who has declared obesity as a disease it is mm-hmm. not a cosmetic surgery at all it is a life saving surgery for those people who are morbidly obese who are having all these diseases associated with them so for them this is a life saving surgery one second thing is yes i can understand the apprehension in your mind also and the mind of the people that if i am unmarried and if i am female and if i have to go undergo the bariatric surgery definitely there are situations for example if the bmi is between 35 and 45 then we go in for single incision laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy and that incision mm-hmm. is intraumbilical so most of times when we give only one incision inside the umbilicus the patients or anybody for that matter after few days are not able to see any scar mark on their abdominal wall so that is the beauty that is a beauty so this way i would not again say that it is a cosmetic surgery but we are taking care of the cosmesis also and similarly yeah and similarly if there are patients who are male patients and who are having morbid obesity we go in for three or four punctures they these scars also vanish off with passage of time so ultimately the patients do not get such a big incision as they used to get maybe 50 40 years back but now these are small punctures 5 mm and 10 mm and with passage of time they vanish off so thinking is that please it should come out of your mind that bariatric surgery is a cosmetic surgery no but cosmesis can be added by just single incision laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy or gastric bypass within the umbilicus so that the scar is not god has created the umbilicus only for the surgeons so we should use that okay great i i, I think that's very reassuring to everyone because you know there is a bit of a mind block doctor indu uh, you know if i can come to you because 
no uh, many people especially during during the current times the minute you mention the word surgery you know they'll have a mind block that why do i have to go for surgery why don't i try uh, you know other uh, other methods um can you explain to us what's the biggest challenge you face when you try and convince especially your patients that they do need surgery what's the biggest myth or misconception that many patients have See, surgery as such, nobody wants to undergo a surgery. They always want a medical uh, treatment before trying for a surgery. Like if we have to uh, do some treatment for maybe uh, bleeding problems and we tell them to get the uterus removed by surgery, first they will ask for medical options. The same way mm -hmm. the pa patients will ask for the medical options first and then the, they want to go for a surgery. Because surgery as such, everybody is scared of the complications they are not scared of the complications of obesity but they are more mm. uh, scared of the complication of the surgery but this the, re the truth is not this okay but uh, you know what's the kind of uh, success say dr parveen i mean how complicated how long is the surgery and what's the typical success rate uh, i would say that in today's era when for example we started our biotic program in way back in 2000 that means 20 odd years have flown and we are giving the complete set of investigations to the patients. We go in for pre-operative endoscopy, we go in for sleep study, we go in for pulmonary function test and so on and so forth. Once we have stratified the risk, then we do the surgery and the patient is admitted one day prior. Next day, the surgery is done. It takes around one and a half to two hours for the surgery and one and a half to two hours for the anesthesia to go in and come out. And then the patients are able to move around the same very evening. And next day, patients come down to down the stairs and go up the stairs. And after 48 hours of the surgery, they are discharged. So what I mean to say, the laparoscopic surgery has definitely made a difference in the lives of those people who were not even moving, who were morbidly obese, they were apprehensive. So they that has made a difference. So again and again, I am re-emphasizing, as Dr. Indubhati has also mentioned, that the risk of the disease is far greater or far more than the risk of the operation today. And if we are going to an excellent workshop, I would put it this way, rather than sitting on just close to the tree and getting the surgery done, no, that is not the answer. You should go to a surgeon who is well accomplished, who are doing maximum number of pediatric work. And then once the all these investigations are done, and once optimization is complete, then there is no risk. Then there is no okay. risk. Yeah. Okay. So it's been two decades. I, I think that's a very important point. Surgeons have got more experience. And uh, once all the, and you t take the decision for surgery in a very calibrated and empirically, you know, dependent on the data which is coming in, in terms of the state of your uh, physical well-being sure. for undertaking that. So, okay. Uh, so, essentially, uh, Dr. Indu, I mean, it seems like, for instance, as a woman, uh, and many of our viewers will have, for instance, gone through a cesarean section, it, it would be less invasive or actually recovery time sounds quicker than, say, I would after a cesarean section. Would you say that? No, the recovery time is much quicker than as compared to cesarean section because it is a minimally invasive procedure which we are doing. It is only three punctures we are making for pediatric surgery. So the recovery time is only a week. Next mm -hmm. day, the patient is moving about walking. They can climb the stairs. No, not a problem. Okay. So uh, I, I think just for women, in terms of a comparative indicator, I, I, I think this would be quite uh, illuminating. Um, uh, Doctor, it's a difference between uh, cesarean and normal delivery. If pediatric surgery is just like a normal delivery as compared to cesarean section. Wow. Okay. I, I think that's great for all our uh, women viewers. I think that really puts it into perspective. Uh, Doctor, Indu, about in terms of you know, out of all the patients, that you're you're primarily a gynecologist. But it seems like you also have to advise a lot of women because you're seeing a lot of obese patients as well. Um, so, um, you know, if I come to you as, as a woman and I, I am obese, should I first come to a gynecologist, which is yourself, or directly go to a laparoscopic surgeon? First, you can go to any physician. It may be a general physician, it may be a gynecologist, it may be a pediatric surgeon itself where you want to go. But the thing is, we have to try first the medical treatment, first the diet, 
and the exercise and if they are not able to lose weight with that only then they should go for consider surgery or if their basal metabolic rate is very high that is more than 35 or 32 if they have comorbidities then they directly they should go directly to a pediatric surgeon to consult okay i i think we are coming to that part of the show where we really want to hear. yes yes Dr. No, Dr. i would i would just add on in dr indu's version that it is it is a multidisciplinary action it is not one that only gynecologist has to decide not one mm-hmm. that only bariatric surgery has to decide or the physician has to decide all of us when we investigate the patients then we make sure that she is for example if it is a woman patient and obese patient i definitely want that she should also doctor indu should also examine her so that mm-hmm. we don't miss anything the aspects of pcod or other things second similarly the physician the cardiologist the pulmonologist any and every one the anesthetist so once it is a multidisciplinary approach then only we will be getting the best possible results so we always make sure that as as for example in cancer patients it is a tumor board mm-hmm. which sits in right. and decides similarly in obesity in bariatric surgery also it is i would not call it a tumor board but it is obesity board so that all the physicians contribute and that is a reason of our success one second is that long term follow up is very very important there are centers in india as well as abroad who are not having any follow up of the patient they do the operation and then the patient goes away but no mm-hmm. in our situation in our team there are bariatric coordinators who will carry on calling the patient sir madam how are you doing how much have you lost how much protein are you taking so that kind of follow up is very much important so once we have a excellent pre operative workup once we have an excellent surgery and then post operatively good follow up that leads to results rather than one cutting only okay i i i think we're getting to that point where we learned a lot about obesity about how it's a disease how covid is a very serious factor that especially all obese patients need to consider and take action on and of course how obesity affects all parts of our body and what the surgery looks like Uh, Dr. Indu, you know we've come to that part of the show where we want to hear about uh, patient stories because one of the things we've learned over the course of this series is not too many patients want to share the fact that they have bariatric surgery. More that you know this was oh I've just lost the weight magically, but actually behind it there is a long story. Share with us some stories of you know patients that you you remember who really you know had a victory, fought a hard battle, and come out victorious against obesity. Doctor Bhatia will be able to tell you better because he is a very good storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> he will tell the story. He will not tell only one story. He will tell you ten stories. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would, I would just jump in. Can you imagine one of our bariatric coordinators now? She visited us with her husband around eight years back. and at that time when we got the eco cardiography done and heart heart function was just 30% just 30% and she was around 35 years old and she was morbidly obese so i asked that yes this is the person who has to go in for surgery but her husband was very much i would say terrified when he saw that eco shows only 30% ejection fraction in eco and then he was not agreeing but i told her told them both of them husband wife that we are going we have done such kind of surgeries in so many patients and i can tell you that even her heart function will improve after bariatric surgery and as as luck would have it she underwent the surgery and now for last 8 years she is working as a bariatric coordinator with us she is so happy that she is able to motivate inspire so many of our patients also that i had a challenge i got the surgery done and now i am far far better and i have a son who is 22 years old and they are surprised that you don't look like 45 or whatever age but still mm-hmm. you are working so big so there are n there are patient for example 190 kg 200 kg 300 kg i have done robotic surgery in 300 kg patients also who were not able to move out of their bed they were just dependent on somebody for even for day to day activities and once mm-hmm. they underwent all the investigations then operations and then ultimately now they are running they are running over so the, the basic thoughts are they have and one of the patients said 
that sir you have made me so look young that even my husband says that i have got three daughters now rather than two daughters and one wife oh my god <laughs> 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 that, uh, those are some really wonderful stories. I think uh, you have your own geriatric coordinator who has lived through the tale and you can't have a better brand ambassador than that. Dr. Indu, I understand you've come into the show. You've just, uh, you've just delivered uh, a baby girl. So doctors are never off, uh, off duty. Uh, what's been the biggest joy to you, both as a gynecologist and as a surgeon? You know, uh, what keeps you going and, uh, you know, keeps you motivated? Especially a message for you know, you're, you're bringing in new life every day. What would be your message, especially to young women and, you know, young girls today in their fight against obesity and overall weight gain? If uh, somebody has lost weight and uh, they gain confidence after that, like our pediatric coordinator who was a housewife earlier and now she's uh, motivating and she's uh, attending those conferences, obesity conferences and motivating the patients and um, doing good work in our hospital. So that kind of confidence if you generate in somebody, then it is uh, definitely fulfilling and it gives us satisfaction. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Paveen, you know, our campaign has been to act against obesity and we want to bring that message across to people. Um, you know, what would be your message today, both for the young who are perhaps not obese, but, you know, they are locked down, they are seeing their weight going up, and also for those who have been fighting this battle against obesity with very little success? I would say, especially for my young daughters, just, just like my daughters, so shed before you wed. Shed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> shed before you wed means that if you are going in for, you are a marriageable age, and if you are going in for marriage, if you are obese, then the chances of infertility are very, very high. And then definitely, if, if you can take care of your, control your body, and then you marry, then de definitely you will not see the negative aspect of fertility. That gives us the maximum impulse or push that yes, one should go in for the shed before you wed. One. Second, okay. especially for those patients, sar jai, prasar na jai. Sar jai, prasar na jai. Means <laughs> even if, even if you are slightly on the higher side, you are on the overweight scale, not morbidly obese, do 45 minutes of exercise every, every day, every morning and morning or evening or any time is the best time for exercise. Third, third aspect is harkat mein barkat hai. Harkat mein barkat hai. You carry on exercising. Don't please make very, very short, small goals. Make a goal that, yes, another six months, I should be this. And then you will be able to do it. Many times, most of the young people especially get frustrated if they are not losing as they wanted it to be. I think it is mm -hmm. a, one has to resist the temptation. Once you start resisting the temptation, once you stop taking alcohol, a lot of alcohol, a lot of chocolates, or a lot of carbohydrate food, rich food, then definitely it is going to make a difference. So our thinking is strike a balance and God Corona, I put it this way, God Corona has taught us that for health is the first wealth. Today, we have to be careful about our health. If we let the coronavirus invade our adipose cells, then we are going to have a cascade of events and the consequences are definitely we know it. So please take care of your body first. And then you take care of masks, take care of social distancing and sanitation. That's it. That is going to make you live through this crisis period also. Right. Uh, I, I think you put it beautifully. I couldn't put it better, I think, in terms of a message. But, you know, behind every successful man, there is, there is a woman. And in this case, we have uh, Dr. Indu as well. So, Dr. Indu, I'll let you have the last word, uh, especially on, uh, you know, um, uh, on your final message uh, in, in, in the light of this campaign. Dr. Hindu, go ahead. I think she has lost the connection. Or... Oh dear. Okay, technology is working uh, against <laughs> us. But I, was going, I was going to say, Dr. Parveen, that uh, you know, shed before you wed applies to both men as well as women. You'd say? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, great. Uh, I think on that note, it's been such an absolute pleasure. Dr. Praveen uh, Bhatia and Dr. Indu Bhatia, I think you're doing wonderful work and it's our honor to have you on the show and really explain to us so clearly with human examples about why it's important that we all take action, whether it's for ourselves or for our loved ones against obesity. Thank you. Stay safe. And uh, once again, that brings us to the end of this special series. Act Against Obesity. We hope you gained a lot of valuable information. We hope you go out and act today. Uh, that's it on the show. We'll catch you again next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Thanks. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Praveen. Thank you, Dr. Endo. Dr. Praveen, I don't think you have a marketing. You don't. You don't need a marketing. Uh, <laughs> head. You're such a. You're such an erudite speaker. Thank you so much. Thank It's you. very rare, you know, uh, for doctors to be. Um, you know, so uh, to communicate so so well. No, I but I that. I would just end up by saying that somebody came to our hospital and asked that how many marketing people you have employed for your hospital. So I said that twenty one thousand nine hundred thirty six long time back. So he was yeah. surprised that how do you manage twenty one thousand one nine? So I said that all my patients are my my marketeers. So once they go out into the market, they always mm -hmm. tell, and that is the reason of our success. As simple as that. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank Bhatia. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye. Bye.